Hello world, it's Siraj. This video is part of a series in teaching you how to use BigML, the machine learning platform for everyone. In this episode, we're gonna be talking about models. Machine learning is all about taking a learning algorithm and feeding it training data to learn from. The term model refers to the model artifact that is created during this training process. There are several types of ML problems that require a model to predict some objective field, given a number of input fields. These problems can be divided into two categories, classification or regression, depending on the data type of the objective field. Classification is used when the objective field is categorical. An ML algorithm can be used to classify instances of a given data set. So having trained on a data set of comedians labeled as either funny or not funny, a classifier would be able to predict if a new comedian was funny. Regression is used when the objective field is numeric. An example problem would be trying to predict the price of Bitcoin over time. It's a machine learning model that predicts a continuous value. The value in this case, the price of Bitcoin changes over time. We can create a line of best fit that will allow us to predict a future Bitcoin price based on past Bitcoin prices. Both of these problems can be solved using supervised machine learning. Supervised means that the data is labeled, as in we know what we're trying to predict and our data set is labeled with our objective field beforehand. This labeling could either be done by humans or some deterministic machine process. BigML uses a decision tree based algorithm to model both classification and regression problems. This algorithm is based on the classification and regression trees algorithm proposed by Leo Breeman in 1984. In BigML, we build a model from our data set, then use it to do an evaluation, make a single prediction or a batch prediction. There are three steps in the model workflow process. The first is building the model, the second is evaluating the model, and the third is making predictions with the model. We'll go through each of these step by step and talk about what's involved in the process for each. Let's start off by building our model. We've already got our data set handy. We're using the US primary results data set. We have the data locally as a CSV and uploaded it as a source, which is a representation of raw data on BigML. We then converted the source to a data set, which is a structured version of our source. Now we want to create a model with our data set. The model will help us predict our objective field, which in our case will be the state. So given fields like candidate choice and number of votes, we will want our model to be able to predict the most likely state. To create a model from our data set, we can just use the one-click option from our data set detail view. So simple, a programmer could do it. Wait, programmers are smart. Alternatively, we can execute the one-click option to create a model from the data set list view. Both options build a new model using default values for all the available configuration options. Take a look at this decision tree. No squirrels, unfortunately. The color of each node in the model corresponds to one of the input fields. The node at the top is called the root. It's decided by BigML as a split point that best divides our data into two segments according to our objective variable. That doesn't mean though that it's the most significant field since the root field isn't always as important as other predictors after growing the full tree. Branches in the tree connect the root to the children nodes each level down. And we can see that each child node can recursively have more child nodes until we get to the final nodes called the leaves. Leaf nodes don't have any more children and can be used to generate predictions. By putting your mouse over a node, you can see the prediction path on the right hand side. This is a series of rules that lead to that node. The tooltip that hovers right above the node shows the number of instances that follow this decision path as well as their distribution in terms of the objective field values. We can also easily see the prediction at that node along with the confidence value. For classification models or the expected error for regression models, models can be very very wide. Too wide to fit inside the display area so BigML will automatically collapse some of the less important parts to fit it in your browser. If you want a more detailed view, just click on a node to show all the nodes for that particular path along the branch. We can also visualize our model in a sunburst diagram. We just need to click on the sunburst view in the toolbar. The circle is the root of the tree and the children wrap around it. It's kind of like looking directly down at the tip of a pine tree from up above. Just imagine skydiving, unless you'll have a heart attack. It's still a decision tree, just modeled differently in the UI. You can see the first split of the tree followed by others by moving further and further out from the center. The more layers, the more complex the prediction path. The length of each arc corresponds to the percentage of the training set covered by that child ring. Smaller arcs mean less support for that child. When we hover over the chart, the prediction path will be shown to the right. We can also color the chart by field, prediction, or by confidence. This diagram lets you visualize the entire model in a single view. 
no need for collapsing or expanding branches. It's just another way of visualizing your data and can make it easier to read by condensing prediction path rules whenever possible. A model's confidence is a measure of its certainty when predicting a class at a node. It's going to be some value between 0 and 100. 0 means the prediction is no better than some completely random pick. And 100 means the model is absolutely certain that it's right. BigML computes the confidence based on the lower bound of the Wilson score interval proposed by Edwin Wilson in 1927. The goal of the formula is to balance the proportion of the predicted class with the uncertainty of a small number of instances. The formula takes into account two factors, class distribution of the node and the number of instances of a node. So if we are trying to predict if a person will have cancer, if two sample nodes have the same predicted class distribution, the node with 100 instances will have more confidence than the node with 16 instances because of the adjustments that the Wilson interval formula makes to penalize the lower number of instances. There's also the expected error. For regression trees, the expected error measured what it expects to be the error percentage at a given node. The formula BigML uses for this is the average squared error. There's more to talk about when it comes to using models in BigML, and we'll get to that in the next video, so don't move. To go over what we've learned so far, a model refers to the model artifact that is created by this training process. You can easily create a model with one click in the BigML dashboard. BigML uses a decision tree based algorithm to model both classification and regression problems. This is considered supervised learning since our data sets are properly labeled. You can visualize your model via the tree or sunburst diagrams. BigML provides a confidence measure as well as an expected error for each prediction. Oh, and you can do all this stuff with the API too. For more info, check out the links in the description and please subscribe for more BigML videos. For now, I've got to go model some data, so thanks for watching.